All right, as we have said, in order to gain control of the Senate, Democrats must get six switches from the Republicans. One that they have gotten so far tonight, because we can project it in the state of Rhode Island, Lincoln Chafee, the incumbent, has been defeated by Sheldon Whitehouse. Whitehouse, a former state attorney general, Chafee, the man who succeeded his father. His father, John Chafee, a very popular senator, died. Chafee won a term, but has not been reelected in this year. Chafee, a very independent Republican, but it wasn't all right. Ohio next. Sherrod Brown there has defeated Mike DeWine, the incumbent senator. DeWine had two terms in the Senate, but we're going to be saying this all night long. To be a Republican in Ohio is to be in trouble. And uh, Sherrod Brown tied Mike DeWine very much uh, to the president, to the war on Iraq. It was a referendum on being a Republican in Ohio, and Sherrod Brown has won that seat. That's the second switch. In Pennsylvania, Bob Casey, the state treasurer, has defeated Rick Santorum. Santorum high in the leadership of the Republicans in the Senate. But as I said earlier, the Democrats in Pennsylvania set their sights, indeed national Democrats set their sights on Santorum very early in this election year and have been able to defeat him. Now Virginia is a critical Senate race where the Democrats feel they have to win if they are going to gain control of the Senate. And there you see we've got 86% of the precincts reporting in the state of Virginia and George Allen, the incumbent, has a lead of about, what is it, about 25,000 votes over Jim Webb. And that will be a deep disappointment to the Democrats if they lose that one because they had counted on picking up Virginia. They absolutely had and they need to pick up Virginia. This is where Bob Corker, uh, the former Chattanooga mayor, was running against Harold Ford Jr., um, a member of the Congress, a man who wanted to be the first African-American to be elected to the Senate in the South since Reconstruction. We have half the precincts now reporting in the state of Tennessee and a significant lead, 42 plus 17, that's 52, 59,000 vote lead uh, for Corker over Harold Ford. And Missouri is the next one. And this is a race that we think is going to be tight right down to the end. Jim Talent is the incumbent Republican who won a special election over Gene Carnahan in 2002. Claire McCaskill is the state auditor who has run statewide before, so she has good name recognition. There were tough ads in this campaign. This one, you'll... All right, we're going to go to the House now. And as we've mentioned, 15 seats uh, the Republicans need to, or the Democrats need to pick up from the Republicans. And we can give you uh, some of the key House races so far and how those have gone. In Indiana's 9th District, this is a third-time rematch between Baron Hill and Mike Sodrell. Uh, Sodrell won the last one, uh, although Hill had won the one before that. Anyway, they go back at it a third time, and we can project that Baron Hill will win this seat in Indiana. There were three seats being contested closely in the state of Indiana. Uh, we'll give you the others, but this means that the Democrats have picked up all three seats uh, that were at stake in the state of Indiana. And this is a bitter pill for the Republicans, Charlie. The South Bend, where Joe Donnelly has defeated the incumbent Chris Chicola. Uh, Donnelly, a businessman there. Chicola tried to say he's an out-of-touch millionaire. Well, he's not going to have a job in the House of Representatives. Donnelly uh, will win that district in the northern part of Indiana. And then in the 8th District of Indiana, uh, we can project that Brad Ellsworth is going to defeat John Hostetler. Hostetler had six terms in the House of Representatives, always ran a very family-based campaign. His own family was very much involved. But this is always a dicey district in southern Indiana. And Ellsworth, who is the county sheriff in Vandenberg, District of Kentucky. And this is one we want to put up next, where Ann Northrup was the incumbent a Republican running against John Yarmouth. A Yarmouth tied her again to George Bush. Uh, she tried to establish her independence by saying Don Rumsfeld ought to resign as Secretary of Defense. And you said that the uh, Republicans were telling you if Ann Northrop hit the 15th District of Ohio. This is a, a district where Deborah Price has been in office uh, for seven terms in the House of Representatives and is number four in the House leadership. Uh, she's always gotten, in all of her races, 60% or better when she has run for office. Mary Jo Kilroy, a Franklin County Commissioner, is running against her. And this race really could be a lit district in Florida. This is an open district in Florida. Uh, Catherine Harris run, retired from this district to run uh, for the Senate. And Vern Buchanan, who was an auto dealer there and who put a lot of money into his own campaign, five million bucks uh, by some estimates, running against Christine Jennings, who's a businesswoman there and uh, had Emily's List support to, uh, Cokie Roberts was talking earlier. Look at the 16th District of Florida as well, and that one a lot of attention has been paid to because that was the district represented by Mark Foley, and Foley was considered to be a shoe-in for re-election. 
but he had to resign after the House Page scandal erupted and the party, the Republican Party of Florida, put forth Joe Negra, that one in Florida. I want to look at the 10th District of Pennsylvania, uh, where this is a district solidly Republican in the northeast corner uh, of the state. And you would think that Don Sherwood, he's got four terms in the House, you would think he'd be easy for re-election, but Don Sherwood ran into some problems and had to admit to his district uh, that indeed he had an extramarital affair. Uh, he also was accused of, uh, what was he accused of? Beating up the... We're not yet ready to project this race in the 5th District of Connecticut between Nancy Johnson, who has served 12 terms in the House, and Chris Murphy. But the Democrats have been hoping to pick up three seats in the state of Connecticut, and Chris Murphy is leading, as you can see, with 15% of the precincts reporting. We're not ready to project the race, but we can report that Nancy Johnson has made a phone call to Chris Murphy and conceded the race. So we're not ready to call it yet, but she has. And so it would appear control of the Senate. So far, they have picked up three. We'll review those in just a moment. There it is. The Democrats would need to pick up six switched seats from the Republicans. They have gotten three so far. Let's take a look at which three they are. Number one, in the state of Ohio, Mike DeWine has gone down to defeat to Sherrod Brown. Number two, Pennsylvania, Bob Casey has defeated Rick Santorum with a major win here, 60 to 40 percent. And you can see we have 45 percent of the precincts reporting there in Pennsylvania. And in Rhode Island, Sheldon Whitehouse, I like to say there's going to be a White House in the Senate now, has defeated Lincoln Chafee. And Chafee, a major approval rating from people in the state of Rhode Island. What was it? So those are the three switches so far, Ohio, Pennsylvania and Rhode Island that have gone from the Republican to the Democratic Party. But in the race is still outstanding, and Democrats would have Ohio. This is what we call one of the scandal districts, where Bob Ney had to resign, did so just last week. A Joy Paget was his hand-picked candidate to run in his place. Zach Space, a Democratic attorney in the district, uh, was able to win that race in the 18th district of Ohio. And in New Hampshire, in the second district, we can project now that Paul Hodes has defeated Charlie Bass, Charlie Bass, a six-term member of the House. Again, Iraq, President Bush, the war, the issue there. Koki Roberts, they are now halfway there, or a little less than half, the seven of the 50 hey. tonight, and There's her husband so standing right be behind her. Not surprised and to see him on the stage. But Hillary Clinton declaring victory and thanking her supporters here in New York. Defeating John Spencer, who ran, well, I guess an undistinguished campaign would be the least you could say, but... This one was never in doubt. He never had a chance. He didn't get much help from the National Republican. And Tuck. Uh, George Allen, the incumbent running against Jim Webb, the Democrat. Webb, a former uh, Republican who was the Secretary of the Navy in the Reagan administration. And you can see there with now 93% of the precincts reporting, 93%. The lead is only 30,000 votes, uh, Allen over Webb. But if George Allen does hold that lead, it would be almost impossible for the Democrats to gain control of the Senate. That's exactly right, Charlie. And Republican campaign against Bob Corker, the mayor of Tennessee, but we've now got 68% of the precincts reporting there, and Corker has a rather comfortable lead over Ford. We're not yet ready to project that race, but it would appear that Corker is going to defeat Ford. This is an open seat of Bill Frist, the majority leader in the Senate, stepping down there in Tennessee, and it would appear that the Republicans are going to hold that, although, as I say, too early to project that. But if they hold on to Tennessee, if they hold on... Prescription drug prices, was a, we ran ads on it in that district, and we uh, won in that area. And so that is a very significant thing as part of the Democratic agenda, which is besides minimum wage, we are going to have direct negotiations for lower prescription drug prices. There will be a vote, and we will get that done. Districts that the Democrats had been hoping to pick up, we should mention some of those. The second district of Kentucky, this is another House race where the Democrats had hoped to make a gain. Uh, Ron Lewis is the incumbent. We can project that he will defeat Mike Weaver in the second district of Kentucky. Uh, this is a heavily, heavily George Bush district, and it would have been a great surprise if the Democrats had been able to pick it up, but they had hopes. They put money into it. 82% of the precincts reporting, and Lewis has been reelected. In the fourth district of Kentucky, uh, Jeff Davis, who was a uh, freshman congressman, had just one term, a West Point grad, actually speaks Arabic, which I think is interesting. Uh, Jeff Davis has been reelected, defeated. Uh, Ken Lucas. He beat uh, Davis four years ago and then retired in that district. Thelma Drake, uh, Phil Kellum, 
Though the Democrats had hoped to defeat her with Kellum, he kept calling Iraq a mess. She was a strong supporter of the war, but this is a very military district. It's down in the, uh, in the Norfolk and Virginia Beach area. There is so much uh, defense contracting down there and defense bases, etc. Uh, and she, we can project with 98% of the precincts reporting, she has defeated Kellum in the 2nd District of Virginia. All three of those are holds uh, for the Republicans. Now, I mentioned when we were talking to Rahm Emanuel uh, that Republicans were actually doing fairly well against Democrats in a couple of districts in Georgia. These are districts that the Republicans hope to win from the Democrats. Uh, and there in the 8th District of Georgia, Jim Marshall is ahead now of Mac Collins of 51 to 49. That was 63 percent of the precincts uh, to report. And then in the 12th District of Georgia, uh, we have there John Barrow, and the, the Republicans really had hoped to beat him with uh, Max Burns. The president went into Georgia three different times campaigning for the Republicans, and now Barrow has pulled ahead with 71 percent of the precincts reporting. This is their reporting. single best hope for a pickup uh, in the country. I have one other switch, I'm told, uh, to the Democratic Party to report. This is in the 22nd District of Florida. Clay Shaw, who has been in the Congress, well, I think since Grover Cleveland was president. He's been around a long time. A good member. I'm sorry, just Pens go, call it out to me. Pennsylvania 7. Pennsylvania 7, we can now call. Let's take, do we have that, the board on that race? Pennsylvania 7, we can now project as going from the Republicans to the Democrats. This is Kurt Weldon, again, who has been around a number of terms, uh, losing to Joe Sestak, a retired admiral. Uh, who was in the Navy for 31 years. Uh, Weldon also got touched by scandal. It doesn't help when three weeks before the election uh, you can uh, have on television pictures of FBI agents carrying equipment out of your daughter's house. Uh, there were uh, accusations that are still being investigated that Weldon has thrown influence to able to hold. Arizona is a state where we've gotten some recent results. Harry Mitchell there in the 5th District of Arizona has defeated J.D. Hayworth. Hayworth was six terms in the House. Uh, Harry Mitchell, a longtime mayor of Tempe, they, indeed they built a statue to him in that city. He was such a successful mayor. Uh, but Hayworth is a tough competitor, but nonetheless has gone down to defeat in that district. In Arizona's 8th district, this is one that the Democrats were almost certain they would pick up with Gabrielle Giffords defeating Randy Graff, who was the founder of the Minutemen. A lot of people thought the Democrats won this race the moment Graff won the Republican primary because he is a... Republicans were able to hold that district, Rick Renzi. One of the fascinating things about Ramsey, he has 12 kids, and all of them have names that begin in the letter R. Once you get past, this is a solidly Republican district. And Jim Ryan, everybody remembers, was a high school four-minute miler. Ryan has had five terms in the House. George Bush carried this district with 59% in the 2004 election. Uh, Nancy Boyda had run against him and lost badly two years ago, defeats him tonight. Nancy Boyda, the new congressman from Kansas 2nd District. Charlie, this is one of those scandal seats. Jim Ryan. Uh, the infamous to Democrats, famous to Republican Secretary of State during the 2000 election when George Bush eked out that 537. Florida's 22nd District, Clay Shaw, has been 13 terms in the House of Representatives, considered a good member of the House. He goes down to defeat tonight. Uh, to Ron Klein, who is a state senator, well-funded there, it hit him over and over again on the issue of Iraq. And we cannot emphasize how many races. Iraq was the central issue. This is in suburban Philadelphia. A lot of Republicans touched by scandal. Kurt Weldon, one of them, had 10 terms in the House. Again, a power in the Republican caucus. Uh, but um, there were raids on his daughter's office and accusations being investigated that perhaps he had funneled business to his daughter's lobbying firm. And uh, when you have those kinds of pictures in the paper three weeks before the election, it's hard. Joe Sestak, a retired vice admiral on the Democratic side, this was the number one race. Another so-called scandal district, John Don Sherwood had to take ads to apologize to the district for having had an affair and perhaps beaten up his mistress. He settled a lawsuit uh, that she brought against him for half a million dollars. When he went on television and made those kinds of uh, Republicans, had hoped to win from the Democrats. Now, I should point out, at this hour, the Republicans have had no switches. Democrat to Georgia. Another piece of uh, perhaps good news. Uh, the Republicans have been leading in this race. Now John Barrow, the Democratic incumbent, has pulled into a narrow lead with 92% of the precincts reporting, but Republicans still have hopes in this district uh, for that, the 20th seat that the Democrats have picked up. We're now ready with a pro projection in the Tennessee Senate race. This is a race that the Democrats had hoped to win with Harold Ford, Jr., we are now projecting that Bob Corker, the mayor of Chattanooga, will win that Tennessee Senate seat and hold it before the Republicans. 
Uh, that is a big victory for the Republicans and makes it even more problematical uh, that the Democrats can gain control of the Senate. And we will show you why running against Clara McCaskill. And at this hour, with 69 percent of the district uh, precincts reporting, Jim Talent, as you can see, has a 48,000 vote lead. 733 to Clara McCaskill's 685. It would appear, if that lead holds, that Jim Talent will hold that seat for the Republicans and make it impossible for the Democrats to gain control of the... That is the state where Conrad Burns is the incumbent with three terms in the Senate running against John Tester. We have 31 percent of the districts there, or the precincts reporting, and Tester has a 14,000 vote lead. It would appear if that vote holds, and Burns has been an underdog in that race throughout, if that leads hold, Tester uh, will carry that seat before the Democrats. And then the one that is just tight as a tick, and former Republican Navy Secretary who switched to the Democratic Party, 99% of the precincts reporting, and as you can, look how close this is. I mean, this is what makes politics so fascinating. Uh, Jim Webb has 1,143,000 votes. George Allen has 1,141,000 votes. Our decision desk has said there's no way we're going to call that one tonight right now because it is the story of the night. The Democrats have gained control of the House of Representatives. They needed to take 15 seats away from the Republicans. So far, they have taken 21, and it is our projection when the night is over, they will take somewhere between 26 and 38 seats away from the Republicans. And so far, the Republicans have taken zero seats away from the Democrats. The Senate, much more problematical. The balance of votes are still being tallied in Montana, where they have been counting throughout the night. And in Virginia, too close to call. We may not know the winner anytime soon. America facing some big questions this morning. It is a more than fix, and this we do know for sure, that the Democrats have taken control of the House, picking up 26 seats. In the Senate, they picked up four seats so far, as we've been saying, just too shy of taking control there. And, of course, the state out west, Montana, 1,000 votes separating the candidates there as they're recounting. And we'll head there in just a second. And in Virginia, the race also close there. Just over 7,000 votes separate Republican George Allen and the Democrat there, James Webb. Out of more than two... This is that, uh, at this point... As you've said repeatedly, Montana does not have a winner. We came into this with the race neck and neck. It remains amazingly close. The state has more or less finished counting most of its ballots in most places, but we're now at the point where the provisional ballots and the damaged ballots have to be counted. And they come until mid-December. Here's where things stand right now. The Democratic challenger, Jim Webb, is leading the Republican Senator, George Allen, by just over 7,000 votes. And in the early hours of the morning, George Allen was, was urging. You look at those killing fields. It's the five, the five states going from Indiana, Ohio, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York. The Dem there were 21 seats in play there. The Democrats won 11, could win 13. Another two other states to look at, and this this surprised me as well. The two big presidential 